This class is primarily based on evidence, but I'm sure that um, people coming back to the drawing will disagree with any approach we'll find something that's funny um, I don't want to focus too heavily on anatomy to begin with. There are certain um, anatomical ideas that we need to be um, zeroed on, uh, and that will certainly help uh, with our journey, but I do not want it to become the main focus of this initial, because we move through the classes, we can look at anatomy in more depth and how it influences the, uh, the choice of something. Well, the supporting leg is making the pelvis tilt in this direction, and consequently, the ribcage is we understand the journey as we move up through the form as to how that supporting leg is affecting, for example, the lower and the upper torso. So that's another reason why the supporting leg is a really useful function. Now, you might have a person that doesn't have a supporting leg, you might have both legs coming up, um, both equally supporting the weight. Got same on this side, it's going to be coming down like so. And at the end of the iliac crest, there's this little bump that should be quite visible on the model called the aces. Now, the reason the aces is so important is because that is the point where the pelvis turns and the form goes inside the body. So it's really the point of the pelvis where we stop seeing it on the outside of the form. Now, it's also the belt line. It's, um, it's where a pair of pants would hang right here. Um, so it's useful to understand where this is. Now, I usually draw a line between these two points of the aces because they help reinforce what is this axis. The axis of the shoulders are coming in this direction. The axis of the pelvis is coming in this direction. Um, this is giving us already, at this early stage, it's giving us rhythm, it's giving us dynamics. We have compression on this side, we have extension on this side, then we have compression on this side, and we have extension on this side, kind of opposites each other. So what the upper form of the body is doing here, the lower um, half of the body. And I can think about all the subtle bits of design in the next stage of the form. So, just thinking about the anatomy of the, of the, of the upper leg here. Just very loosely, we're not getting into a detailed um, anatomical description, we're keeping things as simple as we can for right now. Maybe this calf is coming down in this direction, something like this. Um, the lower leg coming kind of here, something like that. So, it would be approximately at this stage, I just ask myself, okay, do I have everything roughly where I want it? And I think, at least for right now, everything's looking approximately correct. Um, maybe you can see a little bit of that. Um, notice the way that the upper arm here has gone behind the form, catches here, the elbow's probably about here, and then this arm comes forward like so. So I want to be thinking of those terms. Um, okay, so everything is approximately where it should be. Um, and this is the stage I could go from what we've been drawing with until now, which is essentially a soft edge, like this. We really wanted to start thinking about line like this. And that's one of the really useful things about holding the pencil like this is it allows us to go from tone to line without changing the way that we're holding the pencil. Um, just going to come down here from the, where this edge of the ribcage is here, just come down to the aces. Kind of helps me find this general volume for the oblique in here. Same on this side, something like that. I'm not going to worry too much about um, the subtleties of that right now. Um, so now we have our abdominal wall in here, we have our obliques. Um, and once again, we're going from simple ideas and look at the way I'm subdividing and subdividing again as the complexity level goes up. Now, this whole process probably seems quite mechanical. Um, I think that it's kind of necessary at this stage, but you will notice if you go and look at some of the other videos, some of the time-lapse videos, you'll get a sense of how I kind of abbreviate this process. And the more confident you get with drawing, the more you'll find that where you can or can't abbreviate something. Um, but even though I'm thinking in all these terms while I'm drawing, I may not, in practice, actually go to such methodical steps through each step without intuitively know where something is or where it needs to be as I move on to the next step. So it might be useful to look at some of those examples and see how I'm taking liberties with this format. Okay. All right, so we have maybe a foot here, Foot's doing something like this. Um, the deltoid's actually going to come down a bit further here. But once again, that's an adjustment I can make at the next stage. Um, okay, so I'm fairly satisfied with where we're at now, so now I'm going to go to the next stage. And once again, I may have done this much lighter than I've done it here, or I may have abbreviated this stage somewhat in practice. Um, but the next stage for me is to go in and put more of a line where um, the final kind of statement of the intent is going to be. And what I like to do when I'm doing this is I like to go through a checklist with both mine. So I'm kind of thinking about what, do, what am I drawing? I kind of ask myself that as I'm going. So I might say, okay, well, right now, drawing the upper leg here coming up to the oblique in here, and the oblique's coming this way, but now I'm going to hit the ribcage, so I'm going to be mindful of that volume. So that's coming this way, and I'm going to think about that scapula that we talked about, so that's going to be coming up there, something like that. And I did the same throughout the form. I just kind of asked myself, what is it that I'm drawing? Okay, coming down, this is the thigh, coming down to the muscles of the upper leg, down to the knee system here, let's move across the form to here. Um, okay, so inner thigh is coming in here, something like this, coming around this way. What's going on, on this side of the form? Well, same kind of idea, inner thigh, coming this way, actually crossing over that form, and coming down down to the upper leg, down to the knee system, where things get a bit squarer, a little boxier. So I'm trying to think in those terms, and I find it especially useful when you're starting out, what is it that I'm drawing? Joints, typically, elbows, wrists, ankles, knees, they tend to get boxier, they tend to get sharper angles to them. Because obviously, all of those joints are where bones come to the surface of the form. Something like a thigh is going to be a series of much softer forms, generally speaking, um, because obviously bone is not coming to the surface in those areas. So if I'm going through a checklist in my mind, or just kind of thinking casually about what it is that I'm drawing, I can say to myself, okay, well now I come down to the knee, I want to be a bit more mindful that things are getting a bit more angular. Whereas if I'm drawing the thigh, I'm going to think, okay, well, things are going to be a bit softer in this region. So now I'm going to come in on the same thing, thinking, okay, thigh, coming up to the hips now here, something like that, coming up to the very upper part of the thigh. This is muscle here, uh, and on this side is actually something called tensor fascia lapping, but if you don't really concern yourselves at this point with the names, just so you know. Coming up, okay, same, same drill, oblique, rib cage, and breast, coming in this way, something like this, coming in, doing something like that. Pectoral muscle coming across this way, but then we're seeing the mass of the breast in here. 
内臓、カルドンズ、ね、OK、そう、トゥケーシス、カミダ、ザチェルバンピア、スパートゥーアナトミー、うん、そう、look for it, locate it, understand that it's there。そう、there's a lot of little subtleties like this where I'll have them at this stage、um,、which is where having a knowledge of anatomy can help with this very subtle refinement stage where I really want to think about what is it that's going on with the anatomy, what is it that I want to understand, OK、so the deltoids coming down this way, meeting up with the trapezius, not、uh, the trapezius, so the tricep coming down into the elbow system here, and then we come down to、uh, the forearm on this side.、Um, Sometimes a very, very subtle fat pad sitting in this area here.、Um, so I might want to indicate that. Coming down the bicep, coming down to the elbow, and once again, coming down to the forearm and into the hand here. And I can just cons- continue this kind of process as I go through the form. As you develop your skill set, you'll know where you can afford to take the t e a c h e right?、Um, it's almost like you have to draw complicated before you draw simple. You know, it's the same kind of writing.、Um, It takes quite an advanced level of writing skill to understand poetry and how to simplify everything now. I think the same applies to Borg. So we kind of have to go through the stage where we kind of possibly over、uh, explain everything before then we can find the simple statement, the simple idea of how you want to say something.、Um, so I can go through, let's finish all the, the little details here.、Um, one last thing I'd like to just discuss、um, today is because I've been thinking volumetrically, I can now start to write this form thinking in those terms. So for me to understand here, I'm going to go.、Uh, um, so I'm a little reluctant to say this is the formula for proportion. You have to follow it every time because you may have the first model that comes in front of you. We have a longer torso or shorter legs than the proportion that we give, but this is for generalities, just really. So we have our upper torso, our lower torso here. Let's just indicate where the head is. So in the side over here, something like that.、Um, let's look for some legs. Very loosely. One thing that you can look for, generally speaking, is from the top of the head to the cubic bone. I go like this, I come down. Well, that tells me where the legs are, just right here. Halfway, <laughs> excuse me, between the top and the legs, halfway is the cubic bone.、Um, if I go halfway between here and here, somewhere in here, this is actually probably just below the knee. So, my knee is probably going to be sitting right about here. And then, obviously, I'm going to talk about it. So, top of the head, cubic bone, feet, halfway.、Um, something else you might find useful, and this better be much of the ribcage again, here, something like that. Here's from the pit of the neck here, where the new rim is, to the top of the arch of the ribcage, a little bone called cycle process, to the navel, to the cubic bone. They are roughly evenly spaced. I think this one tends to be a little bit longer, but these three are essentially evenly spaced for the most part. So, it's a, it's a point of measurement that you can use. Um, with a certain amount of confidence that it's going to get you at least in the ballpark of what's right. Now, if I come to the navel here and I come out this way, this tells me approximately where the elbow is. So that's kind of useful. Coming down to the lower pubic bone here, the wrist, and then the hand coming down here.、Um, so this is something just to keep in mind as very kind of rough idea with 